Good morning and welcome to Sporty Monday. My name is Mukami Wambora. We have so much in store for you this morning. There's football, local, international, and of course, the magical Kenya Open. We have to touch on that and speak about golf as well. And in studio, first of all, in studio, let me first introduce the people in studio. John Kianda is here. Yeah. And then we have Steve Shitera and Isaac Swila. Karibuni sana, you guys. I don't know why Willis is Willis always come, is always missing on a Monday <laughs> after Manchester United isn't playing well. <laughs> it's 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 inconspicuous. So it's a tactical approach. Yeah. Honestly, it's like he never wants to talk about how Manchester United are doing. But it's okay. We'll talk on his behalf. We'll yeah. talk on his behalf. But then. First, I want us to start with um, here at home, Kenya. Um, Jacob Ghost Mulay has released the squad for Kenya that will be facing um, Egypt and will be facing Equatorial. Uh, uh, who was that? Togo. They head to Togo. 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 Togo yes, mm. yes. In the African Cup of Nations. And uh, Sula, there's a massive omission. Uh, there's a massive omission, as you've said it. Uh, Captain uh, Victor Wanyama oh. will be missing from uh, that Sorry. Um, Shitera, mm. uh, we'll come back to you, Swila. Okay. We'll come back to you. <laughs> we need to sort out your mic first. Uh -huh. Shitera, yeah. tell us a bit about our big omission from this squad and whether it will be that important. I think it's a bold move from the coach because it was a matter of time uh, before this happened. Uh, you remember the squad that uh, represented Kenya at AFCON in Egypt. So many people uh, were asking uh, the then coach, Sebastian Minye, to crack the whip in the midfield, uh, but uh, uh, he did not have uh, the, the, the audacity to do that. And I think it is the first time uh, uh, Mule has done it. Uh, a list of coaches have been evading uh, trying to uh, stand by the captain. But I think it's about time uh, to move on to our next uh, generation of players in uh, Moguna and uh, Kinanyakea. And I think it's a bold and good move even as we prepare for uh, Togo and uh, Egypt. I say, people keep on saying that it's a mathematical uh, arrangement uh, that we really need to uh, overcome. But I, I, as as where I sit, I can say that uh, it's really over for us in AFCON unless something major happens, like it happened uh, when Sierra Leone were bundled out by FIFA. I don't think that uh, really uh, <laughs> Mohamed Salah will test positive for COVID-19 <laughs> again. <laughs> it will be, uh, let us just participate and uh, officially uh, get out of it but that is a good squad uh, a young squad are uh, the players who who faced south sudan uh, and tanzania are getting wins in as much as tanzania and uh, south sudan are not in our league to prepare for a team like egypt i think that is that was a very low key uh, preparation and uh, friendlies a challenge again to fkf and uh, nick mwendwa I don't know why he went for Tanzania and uh, uh, South Sudan. We've been playing uh, big matches like Zambia, you remember? And they've been giving us a solid preparation. This one, uh, I think the results, uh, we just wait for them. Mm. Kenda, do you agree with Shitara in terms of the young players coming in? Will these games be a good step for them in terms of experience and looking forward? Because, and how do you feel about Kenya right now and whether they'll advance or if we have any hopes? Uh, about advancing, I don't think so. As Shitara says, I hope Mo Salah doesn't test positive. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mohamed didn't name. The two friendly matches, as Shitara said, those are not the kind of friendly matches we play when you want to face a team like Egypt. I think they've already given up. That's why, while well, like, I thought to chase in easy at least. Mm. But what I like is the way the boys played in those two friendly matches. We could see competition in that team. We could see the Kunato na Jituma and Rakakwa Timu next one that were the next generation of players were around the I think for so long we've uh, relied on Victor Wanyama in terms of like uh, in terms of yani hakuna players wengine wanaweza kujua ingia kwa hiyo hiyo namba I think it's a bold move for Jacob Gosmele to drop Wanyama and give another generation of players an opportunity 
But in terms of uh, preparing for Egypt against, uh, playing against South Sudan, then playing against Tanzania, I don't think so. Mm. It, it, it wasn't. But what actually I expected, if I was Jacob Gautenle, singe ita international player yoyote. Mm. Singe ita international player yoyote. Nikecheza tu na local players. Because sasa yoni exposure. Wanapata exposure. Playing against Egypt, playing against uh, Togo. I don't think if there was need uh, for them to call international players in that squad. So to me, B big move, uh, bold move to drop Wanyama, mm -hmm. but in terms of exposure, I think this new generation of the Capaitos, the, the Elvis Rupiers, the Mugunas need more, more exposure. So mm -hmm. I think he did a great thing. Swilla, I think Wanyama. you can sort of go over the squad that we have right now, Harambe Stars and the people he picked, yeah, maybe sure, picking sure. out some of the key players. In the goalkeeping department, I'm pretty much happy with uh, Ian Otieno and uh, Saruni has been quite unlucky with the national team because every time he gets a call up, uh, but again he falls at the final hurdle in the pecking order. And even this time round, if he's to stick to those three, I think Ian Otieno will get the nod. Now, going to defenders, uh, without a lot of doubt, if you ask me, Joa Shenyango, Berlin Wall, and Joseph Okumu, that would be my uh, favorite pairing in the central defense. Okumu has been outstanding, even in Sweden with the national team. Joash, we know what is done with Goma here, Harambe Stars, and even Simba. Now, if you go to midfield, uh, the major omission there for me is Johanna Tosh Omolo. Oh, Tosh uh, went to, to Turkey not long ago, and to me, he's been one of the most outstanding box-to-box -box midfielders we've had. You saw even in AFCON. He's the guy, actually, who stood out even when we beat Tanzania 3-2. He plays his, his heart out. Then again, of this, a game of this magnitude when you are going to face the Pharaohs, you need experience. Players who can stand the pressure, who can rally the team when everything is not working out. If I look at the midfielders we have there, the only player who has played at the very top level and understand what we mean when you're fighting for the, the, the flag and a lot is at stake is Anthony Teddy Akumu. Nyakeas, Duncan Otienos, they are all upcoming, but here we're talking about experience. Lawrence Jum again, a very good run at Goma here and now Sofapaka. I would put my money that he could get uh, some minutes in this game. For Kevin Kimani, he's blowing hot and cold, of course, after stints abroad and coming back to the KPL. I don't think he's uh, hit his top level as much as scoring quite a couple of goals. But I would have loved to see Johanna Toshomolo in that squad. As to why Kimanzi left him out, rather ghost, he's got his own reason. Finally, in forward line, there's no doubt whatsoever. Olunga is our lead striker. Masood then Masood Juma, Juma I don't know why ghost seems to have some liking for him. Because Masood actually... It's not just ghost. Yeah, they're, they're but he's ghost. always been getting call-ups. But I have my own reservations with Masood Juma. Michael Olunga, that's fine. Uh, Rupia, we've seen what he's doing locally, and of course, Eric Baito. So that spot of mm. Masud yeah. Jum actually yeah. should have gone to some striker. I uh, don't know why he's in the squad. <laughs> Let me play devil's advocate, especially with regards to midfield. You've spoken and you've said Antonio Akumu is the only person with experience. Do you feel Victor Wanyama would have been one of those players to offer experience? No. Especially, consider, consider World Cup 2006. O omit him, omit him. Consider you see, World Cup. You see Mukami, if o Sebastian Minye was brave enough, Mm. Wanyama even in Egypt should yeah. just have been as a motivation partner, but not clocking the mid. Exactly. He, he lost you his remember. form ages ago, even before he left Tottenham. <laughs> yeah. So he shouldn't actually <laughs> be in the national team. I think... Yeah. I think uh, uh, he can be in the ghosts. squad, but not actually play. Absolutely. Because if you think of, of World Cup 2006, mm -hmm. They brought on David Beckham, he was 31, and he came on more as uh, the experience to show. Yeah, and just guide just the young players in the dressing room. Actually, you saw even with Brian Mandela Niang. And he has such a good relationship Cairo, with when, them. When Niang was injured, actually, we were with him in Cairo, and through and through was the team. And uh, what Minyo said, Niang is some of these, the, the leaders of the squad. You need them to rally the team. There's something new they bring into the dressing room. But if you are looking at high octane football, Let's face it, Wanyama is out over there. Let me ask you a question, Mukan. He's 29. Really Wanyama is 29, really guys. How <laughs> can he be over? Let me ask you a question. <laughs> Wanyama is 29. First, by the time I have a visa, my corona was in Jatani. That trip is long. It's too long. Now, second thing there is, are some do, you really think, in the country? do you really think mm. Wanyama, you and your father, did it, Musa? 
like Swila said hii jamaa yani hata kuitonga national team ni kwa sababu tu ni jina kubwa but their players in this Kenyan Premier League better than who are better than Wanyama yeah, in that position I think... and when you're building a next generation of players you need to have those guards to drop some of these senior players Wanyama kuachiliwa kwa tipu you cannot tell me ati tuko sure tutashinda Egypt mm -mm. hii game ni ile tumeenda tuache yani <laughs> tunaenda ku participate I agree with you that, uh... so the, uh, when you're transforming a team when, when a team is in great transition you need to have the courage to draw the next leader wa team amu kinuliza mimi naweza sema mguu if you ask me the next leader for the national team i think ni Muguma he's done the, that with Gormad despite the challenges that they are facing but you hata Olunga atafika mahali Olunga the difference between Olunga and Wanyama is Olunga's form is top mm. he's scoring goals in even in, in his new club in Qatar he did that with the Japanese team so where's him drop in the name of what you nataka kuchange because Bobu yeye ana perform actually the two for Wanyama games. there are options in that in that position so that's why i'm, like, I'm agreeing with Swila and Shitera like he got the right time sasa mu drop yeye patia mtu mwingine chance actually unaona kwa hizo two games zenye tumecheza na Comoro Soma and away tulikosa mabao i think i can say uh, we missed Olunga so much uh, in the midfield uh, i think uh, i agree with Ghost Mulei for the first time i think is a bold step kama ile iliwahi fanywa na Reynard Fabish in 1996 uh, dropping uh, my veterans watu walipiga kelele but he was building the next generation uh, see what that team <laughs> did against uh, super eagles of nigeria the likes of akina mokachi and uh, the biggest miss in that midfield uh, who should have uh, been given a call to me i think it's ayub timbe has been doing uh, a good job uh, 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 in the wings and uh, i guess that is a player that i i i, I don't agree with the mulay on dropping him but again uh you have to take bold steps when you are building the next team and i agree with uh, I, with the kianda that something. i agree with should you I? that uh, this team should have been completely local because uh, there is nothing much you are competing for in, 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 technically we are out so you we see, should have given them to the young lads there are the countries out. that are very strict with the, this covid-19 restrictions so when imagine player kuje and then uh, 14 uh, days 14 days we could do 14 yeah. days una hata games kada remember that thing happened with the with Olunga yes mm. yeah, no. there's that, that cool. like the maybe dropping team and the likes of Johanna i think it's because of yeah. this kuje yeah. bana love that niende huko wewe covid is a challenge but just before ni mukami one thing in goalkeeping which everybody has been quiet about and maybe because they're happy Arnold Rodrigo is missing there and I think it's a good thing that he's been uh, called up. Mm. He's lost form we saw the kind of matches he played last time. So there uh, Ghost actually was spot on. Okay. The, I, but I was like, Matasi, you remember the, that I, I don't understand also <laughs> people have been making noise why Matasi our outstanding uh, goalkeeper in the Afcon is missing. I don't know the criteria the coaches are using to really come up with these codes but Ian Notieno is a is a good uh, inclusion in the team. Uh, but again the guidance of the likes of Akina Matasi as he says Akina Johano Molo would have been uh, critical in this but let ghost build the next generation mm. uh, of players we get to rigi kwa team ndio ningeuliza maswali because I've seen him watching a couple of local matches <laughs> <laughs> around like, I saw I think I he's, he's trying to he's this trying to fish football, he's eh? trying to fish for a club I I, I understand Locally. that could have been the reason why ah. he'd want to play for the national team so no, that he can find a club Julia <laughs> thanks for the for the time Okay let's move on let's move on for the good job is done but yeah. let others get that opposition yeah. to Okay. Are we I ready agree. to move on guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on now um to the Kenyan Premier League. I think we can start off with one of the games of last week. We mm. saw KCB dropping points against Zukericho, bottom of the table. They drew 1-1. Shitera, mm -hmm. is this another case of KCB starting off high and then slowly tapering off or is it a one off? But I think uh, that week almost all top teams drew. FC Leopards drew against Vihiga. Tasca drew. Uh team ya 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 Kianda Tasca. So I believe uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> No, Mtanzania <laughs> but he's on loan on Tasca. Remember last last week hapa akisema kwamba team hii league imepewa Tasca. Uh, but they are the favorites <laughs> the difference, anyway. The difference between Tasca uh, uh, KCB and FC Leopards I can say they are three points. 
because KCB and uh, FC Leopards have a game or two in hand. Mm. And I think those two games at hand will make a lot of difference in as far as points are concerned. Uh, a, a league that has been uh, full of uh, uh, scandals and uh, match fixing claims, it's unpredictable. Uh, I can give Kianda benefit of doubt. Maybe uh, that can count for Tasca to uh, extend that lead. But if we have everything uh, clean on the table, I believe uh, FC Leopards and KCB will give Tasca a run for their money. But all top teams lost uh, points, two points uh, in the over the weekend. And I believe uh, uh, it's shaping up. Uh, even as we are in mid, it's mid season. Uh, I believe it's shaping up. FC Leopards, uh, <laughs> KCB, all show, 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 showed that they can uh, drop points. Yeah. Uh, Tasca would have taken that advantage to uh, extend their lead by nine points with the two games in hand, but they failed. So uh, I don't know what Kianda has to say about that because. <laughs> Uh, you moved to Tasca on loan from Zoya, uh, trading sugar to. Well, to <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Mukami, you yeah. see, if you look at uh, the league and follow KCB very, very keenly, KCB have got this history of beginning the league very strongly, uh -huh. but then they lose uh, steam lo uh, mid, mid through the season. Uh -huh. So I, I don't really take them seriously. I don't think they're going <laughs> to I don't to know if you're seeing some <laughs> of those goals. For I think goal. this weekend yeah. Yeah, that we, was City we experienced stars actually. quite a number of goals yeah. that were spectacular. Actually, that's City Stars actually. actually they, they were leading came from, behind. from mm -hmm. two goals to down actually team. To, 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 to salvage a point. But uh, <laughs> the, the point I'm making is KCB are not title challengers. They have never been and they won't be there. <laughs> the league title actually, as, as things stand now, is between Tasca and Bandari, who I think can go, can last the distance. But if we Leopards look... Leopards ni Mbali, Mukami. Yeah. If we look at KCB, they're mm. second on the log. Mm -hmm. They're six points behind Tasca and they have a game in hand. A game in hand. But and he... this is after 15, 16 matches played. So you can see there's a bit more sta stability than there was in the past. Mm -hmm. I, I have a lot of misgivings. The best they can, can realize is a top five. Mm -hmm. That's the best they can realize. I don't but know again, why I feel like it's a Manchester but, 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 City situation. But, but, but look here, Mukami, why I'm putting my money on Tasca, the coach there is none other than Robert mm -hmm. Matano. And uh, Shikanda, uh, rather, Kianda mentioned a very important point here last, uh, last uh, week, that they have the stability. You won't hear the noise about uh, financial uh, quagmire and paid bonuses. That's neither here nor there. Two, Matano, the discipline he inculcates in a team, the tactics. He knows how to win the title. He's been there, he's done it. He's going to go all the way to win this title. At cost, don't forget Kasambungo, a very level-headed coach. Uh, very disciplined, and he's brought on board his understudy in Anthony Kimani. They were going to work seamlessly well. Again, Bandar is very stable, as opposed to the jokers in Gorma here in Leopards. So, at the Kianda. end of the campaign, I think that I don't think this. I don't, this I, don't, I don't think this season you can place uh, Gorma here and FC Leopards on the jokers list. Mm. The jokers list uh, is headed by Gorma here. And I think the likes of and that's Mada, what I'm saying, Madara actually. United, yeah. Zuki. And you remember last week here, Stera last week here, uh, we alluded to one thing that was, was coming. And mm -hmm. actually, we had that story. Uh, you remember the mm -hmm. match-fixing claims at Goma here? Yeah. We've had it at Western Steamer. We've had it at Kakamega Homeboys. Funnily, these officials, none is coming out uh, bravely enough to go record statements with the police and say, these are the people we feel are uh, culpable. Can we investigate them? So that we see actually action being taken. And even the, the federation charges, has been very the, quiet about this. The yeah. So right here coming out dropped. and telling okay. us that we feel let our me, matches let are me hear fixed. From Nothing has been really done about that. I want to hear from Kianda. Hmm. Um, for the you, what are some, who are some of the dark horses? <laughs> because you've already made it clear Tasca are the favorites. But who are some of the dark horses that might start challenging Tasca for the title this season specifically? KCB and Bandari. Look at those teams that are top of the table. They are stable. I wish you could have Iligi, the table. Iligi, it's there. Iligi, 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 Iligi,
hapa vijana mm. wamekataa kuja training and that inconsistency ya go slow every time i mean according to me reason why those top teams dropped point this weekend is because ile break well, some of those players walikuwa well, nayo kwa national team and they represent the national team so the consistency in terms of training kidogo ilikuwa well, interfered and the good thing is like KCB dropped points, Tasca dropped points, Bandari dropped points. Mm -hmm. Zizile has got top of the table. FC Leopards also dropped points. But for me, only a stable team can win the league this season. FC Leopards are too sure. Kama stability yao itaenda paka mwisho. For Task FC, like Swiller said, I was speaking to one of their former captains, just James Ituma. He told me the reason why Task are on top of the table, that's why they can win the league, is because of the stability. That's number one. Number two, the competition for places. You can and see Matano squad. can rotate the squad anytime. And everyone who's given opportunity to trying to prove himself. And the players who are tasked are very mm -hmm. experienced. Like Silva said, Matano is also a very experienced coach. That's what I was like. So Zico is not. One. Zico but has Zico won anything as the, a head coach? Well, let me tell you something about KCB. KCB did not make many changes in that team. They only dropped a few players and those players were brought in. Remember last season, I think they finished fifth before the league was interfered mm -hmm. because of the coronavirus. They finished fifth. And the was given to the continuation at as a KCB. Gift. The, you can clearly see mm. what is the, happening. The, 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 the <laughs> continuation at KCB <laughs> gave them an advantage to be title challenges. Mm. For Bandari, we had it from Swilla, the stability in the technical bench. To him, we didn't have a very experienced. I think it's a calf. It's a calf. Um, one of the trainers. One actually. of the trainers, a calf. Look at the, uh, the bench. The technical bench is very stable and the stability in that mm. team. So for uh, those three teams, Akuna Kitu Taskiaka goes to limit, okay? So mm. the continuation of the competition was a bit there. So according to me, once again, I'm just with Tasca, KCB, and Bandai, okay. the two teams. But on most importantly, note, Tasca. Time on that tell. note, on that note, let's move on. We have to mention the Kenya Open. Mm -hmm. You know, Kenya, we spent quite a bit of money on this tournament. And um, yeah, the only Kenyan contingent in the tournament, Samuel Njoroge, finished 77. <laughs> And I don't know, like for me, the, golf is one of those sports that I just never truly understood, even if I'm a sports journalist. And I feel like we should just take um, some of the viewers uh, through some of the results mm -hmm. for Samuel Joroge, the Kenyan. We have like in his first round. And also, I just want to explain in terms of golf, the rules, you know, oh, yeah. like I don't feel like it's a, it's, a re it's a game where you can really understand. So we can have that on the screen. Yes. So <laughs> let me try and explain very briefly because my boss, Michael Kini, took me through this okay. in terms of how the results are done. With golf, you're trying to get as few shots as possible. Oh, yeah. So if hole one, you have one, par four, you have to try and get the, the ball in the hole within four shots. If you get it with less, it's, it's called a buddy. If you get it with more less by two it's called an eagle so you can see with Samuel Jaroga in his first round he got it in five so he scored a bogey then pa bogey pa bogey it goes on like that and if we can just see his round four results because that's round two he got a couple of buddies he did quite well in round two and he was one of the only Kenyans that made the, the cut not one of the the only Kenyan who made the cut and was able to go to round three and I think round three is where Samuel Njoroge lost his nerve. He played par the whole time, except on a few holes where he got bogeys. So he played five shots instead of four. And then finally in round four, we see him finishing um, in position 77 at par, which means he did okay in the tournament. And just to compare and see how, how he played, I want us to put Justin Harding. He's the South African who won the tournament. Um, his final score and his final round, um, we can see there he did quite well. Um, yeah, so for, I think you can see how it's, I don't know what you guys think in terms of the amount of money that was spent in this tournament versus what it brings to the country. Was that a worthwhile investment? First of all, it's a, a technical sport as we've broken it down. But in terms of the monies, remember this that attorney was to host uh, last uh, year, but thanks to COVID-19, it was pushed uh, uh, backwards to this year. But again, 20 million, that's for a winner for the Harding, the South African, is just 35. Uh, he was saying he's not yet married, thanking the girlfriend and all that. <laughs> Uh, I think for the terms of money, this is an elitist sport. 
and world of it pays very very well so taking 20 million home I, I have no qualms with that uh, my only concern is you see how the corporates came out big time to pump money into this and of course we are calling it magical Kenya open and uh, we have been trying to use this actually also to market uh, Kenya as a tourist destination and using also sports tourism to showcase that we have very good sports infrastructure remember very outstanding golf course we have in Vipingo current country club being one of them a uh, couple of years back it was held at the Mutaiga Golf Club so I think uh, in terms of the monies that was super organization was superb because remember we've uh, hosted this in the face of the pandemic the numbers are increasing. Yeah. It was played without funds, but at the end of the day, it went out so well. President Kereta was uh, a chief guest yesterday to hand over the, the title to Badding and of course the cash prize. So I have no qualms with that. My only concern, I hope the government could also take the active approach they had in this and rally these corporates actually to come and also sponsor other sports. Yeah. Because right now as we are speaking, a number of Kenyan teams are going to camp ahead of uh, uh, Olympics in Japan. Malikia strikers will be reporting to camp today. We have the Lionesses, we have Shuja, we have our boxers who will be heading to, to, to Tokyo. But you will realize finances becomes a challenge or they don't have the monies that uh, is required or enough to see them through. And because Tokyo is three months away, they are going into training today. We are talking about three months into the event. So these corporates, in their wisdom, Ambassador Mina Mohammed needs to rally them. Let's go out there, support our teams, because at the end of it all, mm. we are competing for glory. Remember, it's athletics that has brought Kenya a lot of honor. Mm. That's granted. Not even golf, not football. So the same kind of support we've seen, because actually, Mukami, the people who golf are the CEOs, the governors, and the elites of this country. They can also, we need that pass string open for other sports as well. I think the discipline that we have seen in the just concluded uh, Magical Kenya Open is that uh, this is a tournament that uh, the money can be accounted for. It has been happening over years and we have never had any form of uh, complaints in as far as uh, accountability is concerned. And I think that is one thing that we can borrow uh, from the Kenya Open and even uh, transfer it to uh, our football, which, which, which is mad with a lot of uh, 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 allegations of uh, corruption. So that is one thing we can borrow from uh, the Magical Kenya Open. Number two, I think, as Swila put it, it was a very good platform to showcase uh, Kenya to the world. And I think uh, it is the best selling uh, platform in as far as uh, sports is concerned. Look at the people who came in. It's an international uh, sports that attracted uh, international players. And uh, seeing Joroge uh, uh, in that list uh, gives me appetite even to learn more of golf. Uh, I remember the likes of uh, Kina Indiza who have been keeping uh, our Kenyan flag uh, even high I in golf. So uh, this is a uh, uh, a field that we can all borrow uh, good discipline and bring it uh, to uh, other sporting activities. Even as we yearn for more money, let us show what we have done with the little that we have. Yeah. We will attract sponsors uh, automatically and naturally. Yeah. Uh, look at what golf is doing. Yeah. They are open, as uh, you call it, magical open. They are open with their, <laughs> with their books. <laughs> yes, can and we I borrow think, that? I yeah, think also can. just the discipline in terms of COVID, you know, yeah. the players were in a bubble, including journalists. Mm. Uh, they're taking a day break. The Savannah Classic starts tomorrow, and all of them have just been left in those hotel rooms, and they're just coming onto the course to play, play the sports. And I think there's just been a lot of discipline with regards to that. But... I don't know. Personally, I feel like for 20 million to go just to the winner, <laughs> yeah, uh, rather than investing, actually, like it's not coming to the country. Actually, actually, the money <laughs> that is being invested by all of those corporates is not actually coming to the to, to the Kenya. Country. It's Somebody going to other people. Back away. Eh, and well, by the way, Mukami, uh, mentioning 20 million, the the, the, the title uh, prize for a KPL champion for ages has been just 4 million. <laughs> 
<laughs> and you are competing over eight months for that four million. Yeah. And On here within four days, budding the 35 year old south african is 20 million rich crazy yeah. on that note let's just take a quick break when we get back it's all about the english premier league and the fa cup Kenya Cup run the clips and then yeah. play the, the yeah. goals as we are talking. Good. Even for the FA Cup. Yeah. FA Cup and all of those, play, run the clips as we are talking. Yeah. Don't. Welcome back to Sporty Monday. Before we get to all of the international action, we have there's something we really have to touch on, Swilla. When it comes to the Kenya Cup, a few games were actually postponed, nondescript, Strathmolios, Oilers and Impala. And it's because there were 12 positive COVID cases, so they'd had to push those matches. And something interesting, Kenya Cup are testing every week. You see, one thing, uh, I, I need to hail, first of all, the leadership of Kenya Rugby Union, led by Odur Gangala. You see, right now, COVID-19, this is a pandemic, and it's here with us. There's really nothing to be ashamed of if uh, a sportsman or somebody tests positive. The most important thing we need to ensure that security uh, protocols, health protocols are observed to the later. And for them to come out and say that these matches won't go on because we've had COVID-19 cases, that's good enough. Because I was talking to a Sosa within KRU and the affected teams were actually Impala, Saracens, Strathmore and Nondis. And that's actually led to the postponement of the matches uh, you said. And because KRU have taken the responsibility to test these athletes, that's, that's just good enough. That's uh, a sign of responsibility. And now I hope even the other sports that are ongoing, they can actually make weekly testing the way to go. We don't just want players going there to play. Probably you're positive, but because they're young, they're agile, they're active, mm -hmm. you are asymptomatic and you're interacting with the rest, probably spreading the virus. Because look at the caseload at the moment. Look at the number of infections. Those in the ICU beds, actually the hospitals are overwhelmed. So care are you? Congole for what they did, that's responsibility, mature leadership, and that's what we want. Yeah, Kianda, um, we're just speaking about the Kenya Cup. We're seeing Cabra Sugar completely dominating the league so far, but 
with regards to the testing for COVID um, and what they're doing and how the KPL are not doing something similar. <laughs> You can always expect what a leg do, but okay, okay. Sorry, we'll have to just give it. Uh, let's hear from Shitera very you quickly. Mic is off, eh? <laughs> <laughs> you need to put it on. I think uh, uh, that was the I think the condition uh, for uh, sporting activities to be allowed back uh, in the fields, and uh, I think it is a, a, a lesson that uh, really. Uh, FKFPL really need to step up because we saw them uh, testing in the very first weeks when KPL res resumed but uh, over time I think they have <laughs> dropped the guard uh, which uh, we really need to remind them that uh, uh, they should be doing it uh, every week before uh, a, a game is played. Look at what uh, European uh, leagues are doing the same. You need to test every week and uh, most probably and more so, uh, you need to keep your players in hotels, as <laughs> we saw in the <laughs> Kenya Open. So can they afford they, that? If they are not even paying <laughs> players' wages, man. <laughs> can, can, can they yeah. afford what's that? What's that? What's that? Let me be realistic. <laughs> do you know? Do you know? Other buses. Buses. What are you talking about? Okay, buses. <laughs> Go rock on a bus. No. If you walk on a bus in Bill, how many teams go on a bus in Bill? Can walk on a bus in Bill? Can walk on a bus in Bill? I attended a match between Gorba and Kakamega Homeboys at Bohongo Stadium. Buddha, ile mawe ili rushwa pali, ndi wafungue <laughs> gate. <laughs> Rona, ile ili rushwa wafungue gate watu wengi one ball. Izo story ya ziku. Mi yeah, nikiva mask. The more important for the players na ulizo umetoka Nairobi. To get tested. You know, unuze umetoka Nairobi. The players <laughs> have to be, seriously. LD umetoka mask, unuze umetoka Nairobi. Huku sisi hiki tuwa tutambu. <laughs> but, but, but who allowed them in the first place? And by the way, Shitera, <laughs> what, what these people, I, I go to Kasarani even annex to watch a football match. The, let's not fool ourselves. These matches are not being played behind closed doors. Fans are going there and they're gaining entry. But even the so, annex itself is open. So probably, probably <laughs> actually, we must not really drop our guard because eh? COVID-19 is it's not real. Joke. We are seeing the, uh, the casualties, the number of lives we are, uh, we are losing. So Amina Mohammed, the leadership of the federation, and even the club officials, they are sensible and reasonable people. Mm. Let them take responsibility. COVID-19 is no joke. Yeah? Mm. And even as we are speaking, we know what it has even done to our own company. So if KRU can do this, there's nothing really to be ashamed of if players test positive. But we want that sense of responsibility. Mm. OK. So <laughs> it's now a, we, it's we... a wake-up call to Nick Mwendo. And, and everybody FKF. Yeah, else involved. And uh, the Kenya Premier League. Yeah. Now, very quickly, because we have run out of time, I want you guys to choose one of the games that you want to talk about. <laughs> so you have to either talk about Chelsea or Sheffield and comment about that, or you choose to talk about Arsenal Actually, and West Ham. I'm think, making you I guys really need to talk about the Champions League. The draw because, for the Champions League. Uh, because <laughs> okay. hmm. uh, I think uh, <laughs> Kiana has been on, on yeah. loan on so many teams. He was on loan uh, at Atletico. But I gave you statistics, uh, Kianda, and all uh, people who are watching that. Uh, look, uh, yes, Chelsea was a team that everyone wanted to, to play so that uh, they can collect points. And uh, at this moment, I think the results against uh, Atletico Madrid, uh, I, I, I could say disappointed uh, my friend, John Kianda, because... You just say, you thought, owe, I owe you an apology. Yes, it, it, you you will apologize when it comes to you. <laughs> <laughs> so I think uh, uh, the Champions League, as many have uh, analyzed, uh, the teams to watch: uh, Manchester City, uh, Bayern Munich, and Chelsea. Mm. You know why I'm sad? <laughs> it's because I wanted the Bayern Bayern Munich Manchester City final. Uh -huh. Unfortunately, they might meet in the semi finals because the winner between PSG and Bayern Munich, which is a repeat of last year's final, will mm -hmm. face either City or Borussia Dortmund. Mm -hmm. So most likely, a Bayern uh, Manchester City semi-final. Well, the then the Real Madrid and Liverpool winner will face either Chelsea and Porto. Yani, ni mefika mahali, sitaki kuongea vibaya sana juu ya Chelsea. Because you can, unaeza jikuta tu, mende meangusha kabati, wamefika finals, then wanafunga tu 1-0, wana defend. Like, ni mende angusha kabati twice. And if you look at um, yeah. Chelsea's draw, they're facing Porto, 
uh, they can beat they're Porto. in good form, exactly. And then uh, both Real Madrid and Liverpool this season haven't been playing yeah. the best football. So there's actually an outside chance we can see Chelsea in the final. Someone has to stop Real Madrid. How was my, my, my thought in prayers, my they thought in prayers are Chelsea does not come anywhere close to the semis <laughs> because if they get there. Shitera will actually sit on our heads. I don't agree. Mm? But no, no, I'm no. praying. You know, <laughs> City have, have really invested collo colloquial sums, actually, since uh, uh, the, 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 R, the Qatari money were pumped there. But actually, the trophy they have been chasing for most is the two big year trophy Champions League. It has eluded them, Kianda. The, but the, if you look at that fixture, I'll put my money on City dispatching Dortmund. Everybody expect that. Porto, Chelsea, that's going to be a very, very kaji well despite the fact that Chelsea are unbeaten under 12 is not really a guarantee that they are going to dismiss Porto I that's think gonna be very tight I think is and a close him. battle uh, uh, please Lastly, welcome him Bayern <laughs> against PSG <laughs> I have no doubt that Bayern are going to to, to, to kick out uh, PSG Liverpool versus Madrid that's a very very tough contest yeah. very very tough contest despite the fact that Liverpool are struggling domestically Klopp knows too well this is the only chance for him yeah. to win a title. So it's going to be all daggers out. It's going to be very tight. I think these fixtures are very tricky. Look at how Borussia Dortmund have qualified for the quarterfinals. Uh, look at their best players, uh, Haaland. And uh, Manchester City, uh, really Manchester United, uh, uh, gave, uh, gave everyone an opinion that Manchester City is beatable. They were beaten 2 nil. So it's possible Haaland can demolish uh, City. You know, uh, let Chelsea me tell you, Porto, I mean, Chelsea you're Porto. saying Haaland can devolve Manchester City. You know, PSG is a one-man team. He's auditioning. Haaland might be <laughs> a one-man team. One I agree. Team. It's just like Barcelona. It has been a one-man Recently, team. the German classica, mm. Haaland scored a brace. It yeah. was a battle between Lewandowski and Erling Haaland. Mm -hmm. When he got injured, Bayern dominated that's yeah, I don't think by the, as you are saying, I don't think they have the don't, They don't have the, 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 the pedigree. And look at, depth. there's something yeah. about and the, the confidence that Manchester City, City have. That the confidence. Pep was into asked this game. A, a few weeks ago, can you win the four titles? When Zinchenko said that uh, we can win four titles, then he said, I'm experienced enough to know that we cannot win four titles. Bayern Munich is still the best team, as I'm mm. But if you look at it, from these fixtures, the way they are, the stumbling block between City and winning the Champions League is Bayern Munich. If he beats Bayern Munich, they are going to leave this title. And, and will it what they really stabilize this season is their defense. And they asked Kevin De Bruyne after they won the, the, the second leg against Borussia. He said, how comes you guys are scoring goals without your main strikers? Mm. Same as teamwork. Teamwork. That is and a even very right dangerous now, by the way, look at Kun Aguero. It's now a fringe player there. Yeah. I.K. Gundogan, uh, the, the Algerian, Rihard Mahrez. Yeah. Everybody is rising to the party. Mm. Yeah? Yeah. You don't really have to depend on uh, uh, the former Liverpool man who is now being played as a false striker, Raheem Sterling. Yeah. And when he's played as a false striker, you've also seen him deliver the goodies. Yeah. So City have the depth. They are playing for Pep. They are total philosophy of possession. And th that crisp passing. They actually out uh, out but, uh, but you agree it's a beatable team. Okay. We have to we have to wind up. <laughs> There's a rally happening in Tanzania. Thank you guys <laughs> for being here at Sporty Monday. That's it from us here. Thank you for tuning in. We'll be back. Stay city keep it citizen TV. We'll be back. We're going to straight to Tanzania with the rally. <laughs>